Because some of you asked for it, I want to tell you about how I turned my standard VW Passat family car into an efficient aero car with little budget. I sold this car a few years ago, so unfortunately I cannot show you live shots of it, but we can still discuss the project with pictures. Since we cannot measure the car anymore, I will use the fuel consumption to explain the efficiency gains. First of all, there was a 2006 VW Passat Generation 3C that I bought in 2015. It had the 1.9 liter diesel engine with 105 horsepower and a 5-speed gearbox. I especially wanted the 1.9 liter TDI because I knew how reliable and efficient these engines can be. I bought the car not in the best condition. It had 180,000 kilometers on the clock and the engine was running a bit shaky. The rear tires were bald on the inside, which hinted to bad wheel alignment, and the fuel consumption was around 5.7 liter on 100 km on country roads and 5.5 liter on 100 km, that is around 43 US miles per gallon, on the autobahn at 130 km per hour constantly. It turned out that the car still had the first cam valves, which should have been changed at 120,000 km, and it looked really bad. I changed the cam belt and the engine was running much smoother now. So this was sorted and I concentrated on improving the car and making it more efficient. Because of my work and the technical development of the VW group, I knew how these cars are developed and tested. So in the following, I will tell you how I adapted my car for my specific use case and I don't recommend you do the same, because your use case might be different. So, I am living in a flat landscape, without steep hills. I am living in Germany, so temperatures usually range from minus 20 degree in winter to plus 40 degree in summer. I am a quick driver, but use a lot of engine braking, so usually I can always touch my brake discs after a long journey with my bare hands, without burning myself. I used the car daily for country roads. And every two weeks I used it on a 1000 km autobahn weekend trip across Germany, where I would drive 130 km per hour on cruise control. So the first step was lowering the car by 40 mm with springs. A lower car results in smaller frontal area and the unaerodynamic wheels are less exposed. Also combustion engine cars are less aerodynamic underneath because of exposed pipes and wishbones, so it's better if less air is flowing underneath and more above. Because I now lowered the car, I did a proper wheel alignment to manufacture a spec, with a few angle minutes more toe in at front and rear for better handling. I then bought four new tires with less rolling resistance and good handling. I kept the standard dimension 195-65-R15 on steel rims. I then ordered moon discs to completely block airflow through the rim for minimum brake cooling. As I said before, for my use case I don't need much brake cooling. Furthermore, these moon discs reduce outwash from the front axle, which reduces drag and the side flow along the wheels is cleaner. Additionally, I used 2 inch wide rings, so the 15 inch rim now looks like 19 inch, but I still have the narrow wheels. The Passat has large brake cooling ducts underneath, almost like a front diffuser, and it's pumping air into the front wheel arches to cool the brakes. When such a car is developed, there are two main use cases which define brake cooling. One, they drive even these normal family cars in the desert at 45 degrees on a racetrack and the brakes should not overheat. And two, they connect a 750 kg trailer without brakes, roll down the highest mountain of Austria, put the gearbox in neutral and stand on the brakes the whole time. Of course, for these use cases you need decent brake cooling, but not in my case. So I closed these ducts with metal plates and sealed it along the edges with tape. The next thing is engine cooling. Like I said, these cars are designed to be able to drive on a racetrack without overheating at 45 degree ambient temperature. Another test case is to drive top speed until you run out of fuel at 45 degree again. In these cases, the car shouldn't overheat. Again, both cases didn't apply to me, as we don't have these high ambient temperatures here and I would never drive this car on a racetrack or at top speed for such a long time. I optimized the car to drive 130 km per hour or 80 miles per hour constantly. The car has 77 kW engine power for top speed. 
but at 130 km per hour it would only need around 20 kW, so almost just one-fourth of the power and hence would only produce one-fourth of the heat. This Passat had a so-called triple cooling package. That means it only had one cooling package in the center which consists of an AC condenser first, then a large thin intercooler, then the water radiator. That meant the sides are empty and I enclosed the unnecessary air intakes there. I closed these intakes from the back so you cannot see a difference. Again, I did this with 1mm aluminium plates and taped around the edges to properly seal them. The stagnation point of these cars is pretty much on the license plate. Since the front profile is fairly straight below, the main air intake is below the license plate. The profile above is swept back and less air enters the car here at highway speeds. The upper intake becomes important when the car is stationary, for example in a traffic jam. Here the extreme test case is fans on full throttle and an ambient temperature of 50 degree, because you could stand behind a bus and suck in the hot exhaust gas. Again, this extreme use case didn't apply to me. And if I would run into limitations, I would know why. So I closed the upper air intake from inside with a thin metal plate and sealed the edges with tape. To still control the engine temperature, I used a button combination in the climate control of the VW Passat. And it showed me the real water temperature while driving. So even in hot weather, I could still monitor what was going on. The engine rarely reached more than 94 degrees Celsius and mostly stayed at around 87. These cooling systems are designed for up to 115 degrees, so no problem at all. Sealing in general was the next step. Manufacturers always safest option, especially in lower car categories. Using additional seals around the gaps at the front of the car create additional complexity in production. Can create error acoustic issues when they don't sit right and cost money. So I did it myself. I used rubber foam seals around the cooling package to increase its efficiency and around the bonnet's edges. While doing so, I also rerouted the engine's air intake. I had to close the standard high sitting one to properly seal the bonnet here. So I changed it so it can suck air from in front of the cooling package, similar to a NASCAR. So I used the higher pressure in front of the radiators to improve the engine's air intake. The Passat already has a nicely covered underbody, but there were still a few openings. I already covered the brake ducts, but now I additionally closed the gearbox cooling ducts. Because in my use case, it never experiences the high temperatures it is designed for. And the tunnel in the middle is wide open to extract some heat from the exhaust. But again, in my case, situations would never be as extreme as in the development, and so I closed the whole body with a metal plate to have a flat underbody. The next thing that was against my aerodynamicist's honor was the roof rail. I removed it, hot glued small metal pieces from inside, filled the holes, taped a square tightly around them and sprayed the little squares in silver. So now the surface was completely flush and you could only see six silver patches that looked like stickers if you went really close. So there was no disturbing roof rail anymore and the car looked lower and longer. So now I changed a lot of the car's aerodynamic setup, but apart from it being lower and the moon disc, you couldn't really see a lot of it. But that was exactly what I wanted. The result of the changes were that the car now needed 4.5 liter on 100 km or 52 miles per gallon on my daily trips across country roads, and only 4.1 liter on 100 km, that's 57 miles per gallon, on my long journeys on the Autobahn. Of course, manufacturers always have to consider every impossible thing a customer would do to the car under every ambient condition. But by adapting the car to my specific use case, I could turn this into a much more efficient vehicle for me. Later on, I removed all the aero mods and changed it back to its original setup before selling the car. I pushed the plates through the roof and installed the roof rails again, and you couldn't see they have ever been removed. So I hope you liked this little story about one of my daily cars and see you at the next video.